night, guys. So, if you haven't been sleeping on T-Bone, and you watch the little short introduction video I put out, then you know we're about to take off on Road King. So, let's dive into it. Tell you what, guys, before we actually hit the road, I love the sound of that two into one Vance and Hines header. Now, let's get on the wing road. <laughs> Don't you know you're riding with the king? Oh, man. Alright guys, welcome to this episode of Rolling with T-Bone. If you're new here, welcome in. My name's T-Bone. I shoot motorcycle related content and any kind of content really. If you are new here and you just now found us, I invite you to go watch a few of my videos. And if you think that the Rolling with T-Bone family or the Rolling with T-Bone crew might be right for you, then consider giving us a subscribe. If you're old here, welcome back. You know what's going on. All right, guys, so this video is going to premiere about a week after y'all should have saw the sneak peek, if future T-Bone is doing his job like he's supposed to. All right, guys, so a lot's happened since uh, the video of me riding Fort Mountain. Of course, I was on Big Papa. I am no longer a bro of the Diner Persuasion. Uh, I ended up swapping Miss Kitty for this bike and then ended up getting rid of Blue Moon too. So I no longer have a Dyna in the house. So I know that's gonna probably hurt me with some of my viewers, but I gotta tell you guys, the Dynas, I tried to have enthusiasm for them. I tried to have love for them. Uh, those of y'all who've been with me for a while, especially those who've been around long enough to remember when I very first got Blue Moon. Uh, y'all see me try to do a lot of stuff to that bike and the Miss Kitty, changing up things. Not that I couldn't ride them, but I just never was comfortable sitting on them and riding them. I, I, you know, I don't know what it is about the Dyna platform, but I just couldn't get comfortable on them. So, how I ended up with this 2000 Road King is I was looking at a older model. It was a 93, I think it's the year, FXR. It was kind of a cool bike and I had offered up Blue Moon as a trade on the FXR. And then uh, I thought, well, and I told the guy, I said, let me sleep on it. You know, I'll talk to you tomorrow about it. And when it come down to it, the Dyna is basically the FXR platform, just upgraded a little. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna be swapping out one problem for the same problem. So I told him, I said, I've slept on it. I think I'm gonna back out on the FXR. I said, but uh, I've got this other Dyna and I am looking to get me a Road King. Now, y'all don't know this, but I have sneakily been looking for a Road King for a while. Uh, and I knew with the two Dynas that I could, out of the situation, come up with a nice Road King. And man, did I score. Guys, y'all seen this thing in that uh, introduction video chrome everywhere and as soon as i saw this bike i immediately bid on it because it this is not a just a standard 2000 model road king this is a road king special which means it had the vented lights it has the vented uh the eyelid on the speedometer uh 
these bars are specific to the Road King Special. The seat is a split seat. You can run it solo or as a solid seat. And I knew this was going to be a special bike. Uh, now, of course, I haven't put a ton of miles on it since I've got it. Uh, as soon as I got it, bad weather came. Uh, Dogwood winter showed up and uh, all the pretty 70 degree days went away. They went bye bye. But uh, yeah, man, I've been waiting for a while to get this bike out and to do some content on it. So let's dive into it. But you know, we have to we have to say show the love for Miss Kitty and for Blue Moon. And you know, Blue Moon kind of carried this channel on his back for a little while because he was uh, he was kind of the one that I went to. Uh, so yeah, I am gonna miss them for nostalgia reasons, but I gotta be honest with you guys, I found out through that whole experience that I'm just not comfortable with the Dyna. I can't seem to get myself comfortable on it. Now I could have probably spent thousands of dollars and got where I needed to be, but I just, if I'm already having issues with the bike, I'm less likely to put any kind of money into it, if that makes sense, but anyway. Nonetheless, the Dinas are part of our history. They've moved on now to, to their new homes. And we're rolling with the King. So let's talk about the Road King. So guys, when I first saw this bike, like I said, I jumped on it because I saw something there the minute I saw this motorcycle. I saw 50s and 60s jazz. I saw blues. I saw nostalgic hot rod feel. Uh, to me, this looks like a 60s style, just big old boat car with all of its chrome on it, and I love that. I absolutely love that. And uh, as far as the ride, guys, this thing, <laughs> it has air suspension all the way around it, and I'm telling you guys, this thing is comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Uh, it's like Big Papa on steroids. It's just really comfortable. Uh, I just, when I saw it, I jumped on it because I thought, man, I would love to add that road key because I have, and I'm gonna ride this bike around a little while and make sure that it don't have bigger issues that I need to address, but I definitely have a specific vision for this bike. And the base for my vision is essentially already there. I got this, I saw this bike and I knew this bike was already part of the vision that I had. I knew that the base was solid. They had the stance I wanted. It's got the overall look that I want. A few things, so that's what I'm saying is, is there won't be a lot of things that need to be changed for this bike to be what I had envisioned it being. Now, some of y'all who have known me for a while, and I'm not just talking about people on YouTube, I'm talking about people who have known me, know that I have never really over the years given the Road King much love. Never thought they were an ugly bike, I never thought they were a bad bike, but the ones that I sat on, I had trouble with the seat width. That's where this Road King Special is different, because Look how tight I pulled my knees in. My legs aren't being forced apart at the thighs, and that's a part of the seat, the sofa that sits on this road king. Uh, some of my, I've sat on them, and I'm gonna say this in defense of the other road kings. I think the bar position was one thing, because they all had a fingers and if you put your hands up here, now I'm automatically sitting back in the seat. So these lower, you know, cruiser, beach, cruiser style bars. They're not exactly beach bars. I'm comfortable. My seating is comfortable. My hands are comfortable. You know, I'm not having to drop one arm to get the tingling out of my fingers. I mean, it feels, to be honest with you, perfectly fine. It feels great, actually. Uh, so I'm not messed up with it. I ain't gonna lie to you, I ain't messed up with it at all. I forgot to buckle my hammock, guys. I got to pull over here and buckle my hammock. That thing slapping the side of my hammock drives me crazy. We'll get back in just a second. Man, I tell you guys, forget to buckle your hammock. I was so excited to go, I forgot to buckle my hammock. 
I love this bike, guys. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, I have no hesitations or reservations at all that saying I could see this being one of my forever bikes. For sure. I like it. Because, uh, like I said, it's just kind of right out of my playbook. It's kind of got everything I already wanted. But, the, the, you know, of course, not everything, but, but man, I love this thing. And, I kept, <coughs> excuse me guys, doggone Paul and I, uh, I kept looking at the heritage, of course, which all the heritage is, is like Big Papa just with light bar and saddlebags. I kept looking at the heritage as the platform maybe, but I never could get comfortable with that ideal. And this being a Road King special, of course, the Road King Classics all have pretty well much all of them come with the leather hard bags, which I think look great. But I like the, you know, the bodied hard bags. But I kept looking at the Heritage and I kept looking at all these different things that was being done with that platform, the Heritage platform, and I just, it never quite clicked in my mind that, okay, yeah, I can do what I'm wanting to do with that bike. Uh, so this Road King popped up and I knew the Road King could possibly be a platform because I saw one we were somewhere last summer and I kept it to myself because I was with five or six people and nobody was really giving that Road King that was there much attention but I kept looking at it and I kept thinking there's something there and the guy was there. I'll tell you exactly where we were at. We were at Two Wheels Only out in Suchus, Georgia. And I talked to the guy. I said, you know, I've never, I think I've kind of slept on the Road Kings because I've never really given them too much, you know, attention. He said, man, that's where you're messing up. And we started talking about it. And he said, the thing with the Road King is, he said, the Road King is kind of like a sportster. He said, that bike can be a blank canvas for whatever you want to try to do. And man, the more stuff, I just started doing a lot of research on the Road Kings. And this started back at the beginning of last winter. I really started uh, doing a lot of research with the Road Kings. I started looking at the Vickla bikes. Uh, I started looking at uh, what was going on with the culture out in California. And man, I'm telling you, whether you like them or not, the Vickla bikes are absolutely beautiful. Now. I'm not sitting here telling you I'm going to go full Vicla on this bike because I still want to be able to ride it and enjoy it because it's a motorcycle. It's meant to be ridden. But the show bikes that are not rideable bikes that they're built ju just for show. The Road Kings are really stealing the spotlight. And, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things everybody has jumped on the Road Glide. Not to say there's nothing wrong with the Road Glide. I love the Road Glide pat platform. I think that fixed fairing, I think, you know, if they're done right, I think they can be a very interesting, very conversation-driven motorcycle. But man, it's just far as setting up a beautiful platform. Oh, that's wind cam, baby. <laughs> but just to set up a beautiful platform, the platform's pretty well much already there. And it's a throwback bike. Like I was talking about the 50s and 60s. Hooded lamps. Hooded speedometer. Chrome. Kind of a low slung style. I like that. And this bike, just in my mind, filled the bill. The big beautiful headlight out front. The vented fog lights. The vented, the, the finned headlights. The finned fog And if I'm not calling them the right things, y'all, I'm redneck. You just have to look over me. I don't have a full knowledge of everything but I just love the way that looks and I'm going to tell you something guys riding this bike down the road oh my god I could see why somebody could jump on this bike and do a thousand mile trip do an iron butt I mean you can move around if you get uncomfortable you can slide your feet you can move your hands you can you know take your yeah and this bike tracks that was the first thing I checked in the and riding this motorcycle was 
to make sure I can pull my hands off the bars in this bike track in a straight line and it tracks perfectly and the reason I checked that is because the guy also told me that I talked to at two wheels only he said watch out because if you start changing a lot of things like tire dimensions rim dimensions they will get to where you'll kind of have to lean one way or the other to keep the bike up straight so this one I set straight up on it pull my hands off and it just tracks in a straight line and that's very important on having a comfortable riding experience with a motorcycle but uh, yeah man I mean I'm not even messed up with the purple paint job because it's not like a high visibility purple it's got a real deep rich texture to the purple that turns black as it goes toward the bottom it's a fade in paint job which came on the Road King Special this is a Harley Davidson color but uh, man I just you know I slept on these bikes and of course hindsight's 2020. I'm sitting on it and I'm riding it I'm loving it it just wasn't meant for me to love these bikes way back in the day but now that I'm on one I it was my bad I messed up I should not have slept on these bikes I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong and I was wrong about the road king so don't crucify me but I was wrong about the road king but yeah man you know and I don't want everybody to think that I hate Dinas or come out hating Dinas because I don't. I think the Dyna is a fun, you know, I, I would have more fun on the Dinas ripping the back roads. Not saying that it wasn't a great bike, not saying that it wasn't a fun bike. I just, I don't know if it was seat position on the Dyna, the way it sit or what the deal was, but I could ride one of the Dinas for an hour and go home and be like, ah, oh, you know what? That's really not all that fun. Uh, you know, certainly nothing like riding Big Papa. I mean, I go out, me and R1 will stay on Big Papa six, seven, eight hours at a time. You know, riding, having fun. And you're a little tired when you get off, but you're not beat to death. So I don't, but I don't want you to think that I'm just down on the diners because I'm not. Listen, the Dyna is an iconic motorcycle. The Super Glide is an iconic motorcycle. It's been around since the 70s. Uh, it has stood as the platform for a lot of other different, you know, Dyna models to come off the platform. But uh, I don't remember, because like I said, those are not the only Dynas I've owned. I owned uh, another Dyna back in the day. And what are you doing, dude? Okay. Uh, I owned another Dyna back in the day, and I don't know if it was just because I was younger, I was riding around on a younger body, <laughs> or what the deal was, but I don't remember the Dyna that I had back in the day being quite as uncomfortable as those Dynas were. And now Blue Moon wasn't just completely uncomfortable. Uh, but people would say to me, well, why don't you order you a saddleman seat? Because I have actually ridden a Dyna that had a saddleman seat on it. And y'all, I know y'all love your saddlemans. I know you do. I know you do. But I gotta speak a little truth to you. That saddleman seat that was on that Dyna I rode was the most god awful feeling seat I've ever sat on in my whole life. Now I'm not saying that all saddleman seats for all motorcycles are gonna feel that way. But that saddleman that was on that Dyna I rode was just god awful. I, it was hard. Uh, the back support was there, but you know, your butt would go numb, your lower back would go numb, and it just really wasn't that comfortable of a seat to me. Now I know I don't want you saddleman lovers to come to me and crucify me. Well, you just sat on the wrong saddleman. Well, no, I sat on a saddleman, and if they're all being made sided by the same company, they should all be having the same quality. And that saddleman that I was sitting on was just absolutely not comfortable at all. That's why I've never gotten on board with Saddleman and putting them on. Because they make Saddlemans for my fat boy. I can, get a, I can order a Saddleman for anything, apparently. But, you know, I don't know. They say it's a specific type of seat. They factor in your height, your weight, and all that stuff. And maybe that's what was off with that other Saddleman. But I can't see paying seven, 800 bucks for a seat 
that I'm not going to like. Call me crazy, but that's just not who I am. But I tell you what, guys, I've got to slip into town here and get some go-go. Uh, but uh, I'll catch y'all once we get a little petrol and get back on the road. See you in a second. All right, guys, kind of checked out the little farmer's market thingy here. Uh, I know I'm riding out the same way I, we just rode in, but I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm not ready to be done riding just yet. I still got some, uh, still got some miles I want to put down today, but thought I'd bring you guys along with me. Yeah, I tell you guys, I am not mad at all with this Road King. Uh, just a fun bike. I wonder if anybody in the comment knows who has a fuel hand that's inside this cap right here. This cap's got a milky spot in it on the fuel hand, and I'd like to know if I could just pop that loose and change that little piece of plastic out or kind of what I have to do with that. But, man, I tell you, I like it guys, I, I like it a lot. Uh, you know one of the things about uh, about Road Kings are is they're not as heavy as like the road glides and electric glides and stuff. And this bike right here, and it's something I noticed the first time I rode it actually, is this bike right here is very well balanced. I mean, like I said with the tracking, it's not heavy. I mean, it's not like, you know, you gotta break your back trying to pick it up. It's actually a pretty light bike. So uh, I think I come up on this bike. I think uh, I've definitely landed on a bike that I actually want, that I'm happy with. The uh, only thing I gotta do now is get me a crash guard, crash bar, engine guard, whatever you wanna call them. I know the political correct term is, uh, you know, engine guard. But. I've been calling them crash bars my whole life, so to me it's a crash bar. But, uh, tell you what, guys, I know uh, we have kind of gushed over the bike here. Uh, I had mentioned just a little while back that there was going to be a couple of things changing with the channel. This was one of the things that we were going to be getting a new bike coming in. Uh, and I tell you guys, I'm just going to try to glaze over this as much as I can as a, as a subject but you know it's just been a lot going on uh, and I tell you these people who they get on the internet and they want to hear their opinion coming out of your mouth uh, all I'm going to say about this because I the, the one of the things I'm going to change about my channel is I'm just going to and I've always tried to do pretty good at this but I'm just going to try to keep all negativity away. I mean, there's enough negative crap in the world. I ride motorcycles to shoot these videos to get away from the negativity. I click on videos on YouTube to watch them to get away from negativity. The same reason you guys do it. So, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was kind of getting caught up in some drama right there for a minute with, uh, you know, I'm never going to apologize for my opinion, and I'm never going to apologize for speaking my mind. That's just who I am, who I always have been, and I'm not apologizing for that, and I'm not going to change that. Uh, 46 years of life, I've been pretty well much me the whole time. With me, what you see is what you get. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you about something. If you don't want, if you don't want the truth, don't ask. You know, here's the thing. Kind of goes back to that old saying: if you uh, don't ask me a question, unless you've already made up your mind up that you're good with the truth, whatever the truth may be. Because I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't feel no reason to lie about anything. Is it when it's a, you know, why lie when the truth is just much easier to keep up with? Uh, kind of one of those things, but. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you can get caught up in that bag of crap. Uh, so I want to keep the negativity out as much as I possibly can. I want to stay positive with my channel. I want to be a positive person. To, but, you know, when my kids look at these videos down the road, they can say, hey, you know, my dad went through a lot, but he stayed, you know, he stayed a positive person. So I want to stay positive. Uh, and, I, 
you know, I don't know if the person's going to watch this video or not, but all I'm going to say about it is this. When it comes to your guns, and it comes to taking your shot, make it count. Because I shoot back. I don't call 911. I shoot back. That's all I'm going to say about it. I'm never going to give it no more attention unless something stupid happens. But just remember, make your shot count. Make, make it count. Because I don't scare easy. <laughs> People who've known me my whole life will tell you. I don't scare easy. It's hard to just run your mouth and scare me. Action's got, the hooligan's got a tattoo on his head. Actions are truer than words. I, I go by actions. Because I have learned in my 46 years on this planet, the people who are going to sit back and tell you what they're going to do, usually ain't going to do nothing but run their mouth. It's that guy that's sitting over there in the corner real quiet like, and he don't ever really say a whole lot. That's the guy you better watch out for. But that's all I'll say about that. But I'll tell you what, guys, the Road King has arrived on Rolling T-Bone. And of course, we, like I said earlier, we'll take a minute to pay respects to the Dinas, Miss Kitty and Blue Moon. Glad that those bikes came into my life. Uh, glad I had, uh, I had a chance to spend some time on them and ride them and shoot content on them. And I always knew those bikes were just basically going to be strictly content driven motorcycles just to shoot for shooting content because honestly I was never comfortable enough on them to do any long seven eight hour rides but so I had resigned myself and then I just started thinking well geez why why have them if all they're going to be is content bikes because oh and the joker is still fine I know there's going to be some out there Talking about where's the Joker at? The Joker's fine. The Joker is just actually, when I get home from this ride, the Joker's getting ready to get a bath. So I'm gonna wash him down. I gotta wax him. I gotta polish all these chrome. So the Joker's just fine. The Joker ain't going nowhere. But I can't be riding the Joker all the time either, because that's that, that's a troublemaker. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I just didn't want to have all these cruisers because now I have a cruiser with my fat boy, Big Papa. I have a bagger now with the Road King and I have a chopper. I got the best of both, all three worlds, so I'm good. I'm not a crotch rocket man, not because I don't like them, it's just because my back, my legs, my neck, my shoulders, nothing else likes them, so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, I just couldn't see having three you know three uh three cruisers just sitting in the yard all doing the same job and two of them only being used to shoot content on so i used them to come up in the world and to get me a bike that i really wanted uh basically what it comes down to and i'll tell you something guys i could see just getting out and that's what i was saying about this bike not being so heavy this bike's actually just fun to uh, that's why i've stuck to the back roads all day this one's just this bike's just perfect to get out on the back roads i mean of course you can get out on the interstate and throw down the hammer and go on if you want to but it's not so much that you can't get enjoy a nice ride out in the country in the backwoods where i love to be y'all who've been here a minute y'all know i love to be right here where i'm at on my back roads enjoying my views and being nostalgic you know all these places hold any place you see me ride that's in the country it holds a special place in my heart and i love going there uh, now with that said i do like going new places and doing other things too so don't don't think i'm just one dimensional but now i'm going to try to give some shout outs if i can remember everybody if i miss you i'm absolutely sorry i did not mean to miss you of course i'm going to shout out Recycle Hooligan, Hill, Georgia Hillbilly, Neil M, Scott Free. Hadn't been around in a minute. I hope everything's good with Scott. I haven't seen Scott or Keith Huntsman, either one. I uh, haven't seen either one of those guys on my uh, pop up anywhere, so I hope everything's good with them. Uh, of course, I want to, uh, my newest subscribers, I want to welcome in uh, Softail Andrew. Uh, cousin daddy over in northern alabama or over in alabama 
No, I'm not sure. I know he's in North Alabama, I believe. But uh, I welcome those two guys in, enjoying their content. Uh, Southern Hogs. Uh, Southern Hogs. Y'all go check his channel out. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I know I'm missing some. I just can't remember like that, guys. Uh, I just ain't got that kind of memory anymore. But I'll try to tag everybody that way, if I, at least if I've been. Oh, and go check out VP Customs, guys. VP underscore Customs. Uh, I thought I had mentioned VP Customs on my channel before. And I probably have, but it's been a minute. Go check out Eric and Tanya at VP Customs. Tanya just got done building a Vicla Road King, Road Queen. I'm sorry, Tanya. I dig I'm sorry. Uh, the Road Queen. Beautiful motorcycle, guys. And they did about a 12 or 13 video series on that, making it and building it and changing out parts and doing all the stuff that they did. So go take them out. Tell them T-Bone sent you. Won't get you nothing. But it gets me through. gets me a, a little bit of a... I don't even know what it does. It don't really do anything. Just show up and watch the videos. <laughs> don't tell them anybody sent you. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know about me sometimes, guys. I come up with ideas, and then I'm like, well, that ain't really much of an idea, is it? Y'all ever do that? Y'all ever have a good idea, and then the next second you think about it, and you go, well, really, that ain't a good idea. <laughs> That kind of happens to me all the time. I ain't going to lie to you. But check out BP Customs. Tanya and Eric, I mean, they shoot good content. Tanya will draw you in, but the content will make you stay. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you guys, I hope uh, I hope y'all got to enjoy this weekend. I know y'all won't see this for a while, but I hope y'all got to enjoy this weekend at least. Because I know my forecast on my phone cannot be believed, but what they're saying is, is it's supposed to start raining Monday and rain the rest of the week, like six or seven days. So that's that spring, April showers, spring, May flowers kind of thing. So we're getting to that time of the year where we're about to have a lot of rain. So we're uh, kind of over dogwood winter now. The dogwoods have bloomed. And I had asked, this is going to be about a week ago, but I had asked in Weems's uh, live chat, I had asked the uh, Georgia Hillbilly if his blackberries were already blooming, and he said yes. And I had noticed that the blackberries were already coming through, and usually the blackberries don't do nothing until the actual, either, it's usually right around the last week of April or the first week of May, the blackberries start coming along, so... The blackberries are running, which they're not super early, but they were running about two weeks early from what they normally run. So, I don't know. That could mean just a wet summer, hot, wet summer. So, we'll see. We may have moss grown on us before we get to where we're going with this, this summer. But, I tell you what, guys. I think I'm going to drop this video off right here, and I'm just going to spend a little time on, aha, uh -huh, the name of this bike. So, in the video, I introduced this bike as Jazz, J-A-Z-Z. -Z. That's going to be this bike's name, Miss Jazz, because I look at the purple, the beautiful deep purple, all the chrome, and I think straight back to the 40s and 50s, very blues, very early rock and roll, and very jazz. So, I call her Jazz, and uh, so let's welcome Jazz to the Rolling with T-Bone family. Oh! And let's also think, uh, send up uh, good thoughts to our girl Jasmine Ty, who was uh, the last video I saw her post, and I'm sure she's posted since then because it's been a while, but she was leaving the country. I'm sure she's shooting us up some great content. But I'll tell you what, guys, this is where I'm actually going to drop this video off. If you're new here, remember uh, watch some of my videos, and if you like what you see and you think that the Rolling with T-Bone crew might be right for you, consider giving us a subscribe and uh, hitting that uh, notification bell, likes, and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, come and hang out with us. I usually do all my premieres on Mondays, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I know, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> P.S.S.S.S.S. 
I have now officially gone global. I have a new subscriber from Australia. The gentleman's name is Dave. His channel is called Dave's Channel. And he rides a Road King, a newer model Road King. But guys, he shoots some excellent content. Please go check Dave out. Tell him T-Bone sent you. Uh, he shoots some actually very great content. You know, he shows you around Australia in a different way than some of the other content creators do. Because he does a lot of what I'm doing. Just riding and showing you the views and talking to you about historical places. So, if you get a chance, go check Dave out. Alright, so I gotta go now. But I tell you what guys, till the next time, y'all remember to take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And hey, thanks for watching.